Hi there. Today we're going to do our very, very first cook with our Afghan Kazan pressure cooker. Come join us. Got a fire going. Going to cook for real. Okay, so we got our fire going. We're going we're gonna to cook it on the actual campfire, basically like we would if we were out in a camping somewhere or in the field somewhere, which is what it's made for over here. Maria's hard at work. So here is our pressure cooker. What do you call that one, honey? Not the Afghan. Uh, they called it differently here. Uh, they are calling it the same, uh, Kazan, Kazan. Kazan uh, pressure cooker. Uh, ours is one of the official ones made in the original foundry. Uh, I found out today doing some research that apparently some people are selling fake ones made from Pakistan. Oh. So this is in the box from the original foundry in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So while Maria is cooking, chopping, we are going to talk about a little of this. So we bought today a two pound roast. We're going to cut it up just a little bit. We're going to season it. We bought this packet of beef stew mix and uh, for slow cooker so I think it's probably appropriate. This is what we would use if we were out uh, camping or like or we're going to be. Or the Filipino caldereta mix. Yes, yeah that would be good too. That. Yeah, Maybe we'll do that while we're up in uh, the Upper Peninsula because we're going to be taking this with us while we go up to the Upper Peninsula and uh, explore looking for um, fall color. Yeah. We don't want to have to keep running back to the restaurant so we are going to do cooking in the field. Yeah. This and uh, nice for fall. We'll have a nice warm home cooked meal almost. Stew or soup. Mm. We were just up in uh, Wisconsin the other day. We picked up some nice gourds few pumpkins and we got these um, massive Indian corns it's um, I think this one is the uh, winner yeah um, this was like some kind of contest winner yeah. but they had a bunch of them but this is the normal size so you can compare yeah. <laughs> it's um, whoever grew them grew them really well so we're gonna take the um, kernels off and so we're going to try and grow it ourselves for it. yeah you can eat it but not like a uh, sweet corn no. you can grind it up and use it for maize and I think it said you could use it for popcorn yeah, popcorn. popcorn something like that so yeah it's definitely edible but we liked this one uh, I thought it looked like a bunch of gumdrops or jelly beans yeah <laughs> jelly beans the deep red one is really nice as well that's, I think, my favorite color color if it's a solid. Mm -hmm. But this is definitely my favorite. And we bought all of these small ones for the squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> because we have some squirrels running around. Oh, my. And um, our, squirrels, <laughs> our squirrels are too stupid to eat them. <laughs> and also there. Yeah, we've got see. one. You can barely see it in the tree over here. But... Um, they are not really eating. We tried in the front and the back, and they're not really, not really paying attention to it. <laughs> so. So we're going to put a lot of onion. Yes, we like onion, onion. and it's this that is, uh, sweet we, Vidalia onion Vidalia. from Vidalia, yeah. Georgia. It is sweet. Yeah, these are. Yesterday when we seasoned it, the onion cooking in the oil inside. Oh, that smelled so good. But it's you nice. Can use it also the uh, violet one. Uh, whatever onion that uh, you can have. But Bedelia is really sweet. Yeah. Well, you can put anything you want in it. Uh -huh. We have uh, potatoes yeah. that uh, came from our garden. Maria <laughs> grew so these. Tiny. <laughs> um, there are a few bigger ones over here. These are normal. There is also big ones. It's one. a good size. But That's by a... next year, I think I'm going to make it in a uh, uh, pot 
you yeah. know. Yeah, I think we need a deeper, uh, looser soil for uh -huh. them, I believe. I think and so. these Hungarian sweet peppers Ooh, are in our garden. That. We've already pickled a bunch of them, and the first time we sat down for lunch, we ate almost the whole jar. <laughs> the cabbage, you know, this is a small cabbage, we but have um, it did come out of our garden. Mm. We got four cabbages this year, which uh, it's ugly. we I don't, don't think like is it. really that productive. No. So, garlic, garlic also? Yeah, every, need garlic and everything, right? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You like to smash it that way to yeah. open it? Yeah. yeah. Right? Very easy. Easy deasy. Okay. It's only like that. See, this is, uh, if you watched me cut the onion up the other day, you can see the chef at work here. She's much faster. <laughs> I mentioned on it to, for people to not criticize my uh, chopping <laughs> methods. Oh right? well. Then the next one. You are the uh, you're the chef, not me. No, I'm not the chef. You are the chef. <laughs> the baker and the chef. <laughs> Thank it's you. Not me for sure. <laughs> okay. I have some ideas. I'm the barbecue person. Yes. If I'm he smoking. Is. Um, meat he is or something like that good on okay barbecue. I'm good with that when it comes to barbecue he's the expert okay smash easy easy <laughs> I Oof. think this is enough, right? Hmm, I don't yes. like that. Yeah, just what you've got there. I think those pieces and the uh, next one too, maybe. Be okay. Mm -hmm. Let's check on our fire. I think that's good enough. Fire is doing well. Oopsie basis. One thing we're going to do a little bit different, and it seems like most of the recipes, oh, can I hear me? One of the things I think we're going to do different is we are going to put a tiny bit of oil in the pressure cooker. Yeah. And we are going to sear the meat a little bit before we uh, pressure cook the whole thing, yeah. just to brown it a little bit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a different taste on that. Right. Okay. Then the last one is this. Pepper. Banana pepper. Mmm. Very tasty. It's not that really um spicy? Spicy. No, they're sweet peppers. They're really good. It's different from um bell pepper or capsicum. Which until I went to Dubai. I had never heard the term capsicum, and then when you go to Dubai overseas, and you say bell pepper, nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yeah, at first it's like that to me too. In the Philippines, what do they call bell them? Bell pepper. Ah. Uh, it's American. Uh, Americanized. Yeah. Mm. Compare to Europe. Europe English is like that. Fresh from the garden. <coughs> Crispy. I think you should have got a sharper knife. Or sharpened this one before you came out. <laughs> so. It's not very sharp. But it's doing the work. Do we need to put the... Uh, uh, this one? What's that? Uh, the seed. It doesn't matter. Seeds is more. Yeah, a little bit. Mm. <laughs> Mosquito.
think we're done. You want it more pepper or enough na this? I think Two. that's good. Huh? I think that's good. Okay. Okay. What about the cabbage? Are we putting it directly in? No. Um, after, after it cooks, then we'll just go into open it and then put the cabbage. Okay. All right, so we're going to cut the meat up just a little bit to help brown it in more more places because mm -hmm. we're going to sear it, brown it a little bit before we uh, do the pressure cooking. Now the meat is from this side, so I'm going to cut like this, the other way around. You're going to cut across the grain? Yeah. Cost. Yep. Yep. Mm. Okay. Uh, I one. think three is good. Yeah, I think. This one, like this. Either way, however mm -hmm. you like. It's going to fall apart by the time we're done. I think so. Mm. I think three. Should be very tender mm -hmm. when it comes out. Okay. Perfect. And then, um, if we're going to brown it, we don't want to put the seasoning on yep. it first. No. We just want to brown it, it, right? You know what we could do to make it easier while the to save some time while the fire is building yeah. and getting ready? We could sear it over here if you wanted. Maybe it would be easier to sear uh, because on the campfire it's going to be hard to get sure. on top of it. Because uh, I'm building a, a fire there. All right, so we're going to set up the uh, grill and uh, we're going to season and sear the meat. This is our massive cottonwood tree that we have in the backyard. Earlier today when I was mowing, we had a really strong wind and it seems like here a lot of times in the evening just before sunset the wind dies down and it's so calm. You can just hear the bugs, birds, They sing constantly here. All right, fire's coming along. It's looking good. All right, honey. Okay. Let's uh, open up the old pressure cooker. Let's see what we got cooking here. Nothing yet, right? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, Ooh. you look like an expert already on this. Honestly, I don't know this one. So, that's it. Oh. There is some water. Yeah, we should rinse it out good. I don't no, know. It's you think? Properly rinse, right? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it was rinsed out. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. clean. So we just need to put a little bit of oil Cut in it. Way. No, we need to uh, heat it up first. It. Okay. Because otherwise, it's. It ah, you want to dry it out? Yep. So we'll start the. Um, fire. So what we're going to do is we are going to heat it up, dry it out so that there's no moisture in it I guess. Right honey? Yeah. Then Let's we are going to put... First. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Let's drink. I've been drinking. Although this is our mango prosecco that we've been getting at Costco mm. and today when we were there they do not have any more of it. Mm? No. Gone. Oh, so we only have a couple of bottles left. I so, love this one. Yeah, it's been tasty. It's um, not very strong now. I like the regular Prosecco. Like, like a mimosa. Mm, mimosa kind of, yeah. yeah. I didn't think it would be good at first, but it's been tasty. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to sear the meat. We're going to sear the meat. Then uh, we'll put everything in. Now, when I watched some of the people do this, they basically would layer the stuff, put the uh, seasoning in in layers, but they don't uh, stir it up or anything. And to me, it seems like it, once you put the water and everything in, you should stir it and mix it just a little bit before you seal it. You or shake it around uh, some, you know. And salt. I need salt. Salt. Salt and pepper, you want? Uh, sure. Salt. Pepper's always good. All right.
we're cheating a little bit just because uh, searing it I think would be a little bit difficult over the open fire but this should add a little bit of flavor to it so if you have one of these little uh, uh, this is our, our grill but if you have a small butane burner uh, you can just do this beside your campfire and this way you don't use the full hour in the um, butane you use the uh, campfire to cook but you just use this to sear it you so. can use any oil yep um olive but oil. probably not no. olive oil no no not not olive oil sorry because we need a uh, high temperature oil so high temperature oil yeah okay we have this a we have a fly oil. on our meat mm. we'll burn him off yep we are in the wild. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to roll it and roll it a bit. Spreading the oil around in it? Yeah. Yep. Nice. Okay. Let's see the master chef at work. <laughs> Right, honey? Master chef at work. No. Oh. <laughs> I think it's very little, but it's fine. Hmm. It's okay. We can put more potatoes in. Potatoes. Yeah, we can add a few more potatoes. We have a lot of onion. <laughs> yep, I love onions. <laughs> yeah, we both do. So, yeah, we can throw in a, we can just quarter some of them or half them and throw them in there. A few more. All right, okay. we ready yet? I think so. What is it? No. I don't feel yet. A little. A bit more. Mm -hmm. It's not bubbling. What is it that the um, they taught us in Vietnam to check the thing? You put a oh. uh, stick in it. Uh, the, Remember? Yeah. Remember they put the little bamboo uh, yeah, stick, bamboo stick or, or whatever in it? Salt. Yeah. Once that uh, it's bubbly. Yeah, it's mm. Yeah. Yeah, that little cooking class that you took in uh, mm -hmm. Hoi An, in Vietnam. Yeah, you did uh, several yeah. things, but when you cooked over the grease, you used a uh, little tiny piece of bamboo and mm -hmm. stuck it in there. And if it started bubbling, then you knew it was ready and hot. It's a uh, chopstick. A chopstick, right? Yeah, the Correct. Chopstick. That once that you dip it and then it bub bubbly, yeah. then it's ready. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. First one. See the fats? Go first with the fat. That's a good film. Flavor. Now I believe you should not fill these up more than two thirds of the way full. You have to allow room for the steam. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Now are we going to leave the oil in? Yeah. It's very neat Yeah. Just add some flavor, I think, right? Right, because of the concave, the curve of the thing that yeah. keeps everything in I it like pretty much, <laughs> right? Yeah. Ooh, 
that is properly sealed. Mm. Mm -hmm. You can smell it already. Oh, it smells good. Listen to the sizzle. Oh, yeah. It's a satisfying sound, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Normally, you can just dump everything. But I think. This is just an added, this is an added step yeah. that we wanted to do just to add flavor. <laughs> but you don't need to do this. It's not required. This is just if you want to make it um, more tasty. Oh, yeah. And we're going to be trying, um, on the road, we're going to be trying several different mixes, several different meats. We're going to do a whole chicken. Yeah. I think this is enough. Okay. This is well time to do it. Alright. Can I see this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Looking pretty good. Okay. You ready? Yep. Alright, we'll turn it off. Okay, so next we will be adding vegetables and everything to it. I think I like it that it's under the vegetable or what? I think maybe mix it. Okay. Maybe put one piece on the bottom and then let's put vegetable and then take put another piece of meat and layer it a little bit. Okay. I think. Yep. We'll try that. So yeah, maybe just leave that one in the bottom, right? And see, or I don't know, one or two. It's going to get mixed up anyway because we're going to have to shake it around to mix it up. Mm -hmm. We've got bitter gourd, right? No, I don't have bitter gourd. This what? is celery. Oh, celery. It's yeah. frozen. Oh, I thought you yeah, had brought I out the bitter have, gourd. I do have a lot of celery. Otherwise, it will be damaged. It's or, frozen. Yeah, so i frozen it so I can use it even mm, okay. for a longer time. All right. Maybe we sprinkle some of the seasoning in next. Yeah. I will put a little of salt. And a little of pepper. Pepper. That's a little. <laughs> uh, you can never have too much. Yeah. <laughs> Not for me. I'm a pepper fiend. Yeah. And then the. Uh, so now we're putting in our. Uh, this is first time we've tried this, so we're going to be experimenting with different packets. I think it's tasty. And. Um, it looks tasty. So, sprinkle a little bit in there. Look at that. Okay. Look at that. Then, then. add some more meat. Yep. Surround it with a vegetable. Yeah. We eating on this for a couple of days. It's okay. going to be a nice dinner tonight. Mm -hmm. For sure. Then, dump everything. Mm-hmm. Now if you want some cabbage or any other leafy uh, vegetable, you can add it on the last. Otherwise I think it'll cook down to nothing. Uh, there won't yeah. be anything mm -hmm. left of it, right? Mm -hmm. it is not yeah. Good. Looks nice. I'm thinking we can add a few more potatoes. Yeah. We have room. You right. you want it all of this? I think it, it says to. It, that's okay. five five cups of vegetables mm -hmm. and uh, two pounds of meat. Okay. Yep. So we're just going to mix it cooker. all up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes in the slow cooker. Mm. It's what it's made for. So this is a slow cook, pressure cook. Mm. And then uh, we can add the water. Great. 
Oh, the garlic, yeah. We could have put that in with the searing. Okay. I think water? Yeah, I'm just going to. How much water? This is to. It said one and a third, I believe. Ah, so maybe let's right. do one and a half. Okay. Just a little extra. I oh, think. I need to put more potato, right? I think this is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So maybe we'll just uh, cut up a couple more. Let's check on the fire. Uh, the fire is pretty much ready. All I need to do is spread it out some. Check out this. Um, <laughs> this is a fire poker. It's about four feet. And I don't know how old it is, but it was used in the corn silos, that's what I was told. <laughs> to pull down and open the doors, close the doors. And um, it's very heavy duty. But for moving the fire, it's really nice. So we're going to move this stuff around a little bit. Are we coming in here? Really mixed. Yeah? Mixed so. up pretty good? I think so. Alright. Okay, can just cover it and then mix it again. Yeah. So I think so. So we put the lid on it. So this is the... This is where the steam will come out. Okay. Normally, right? Mm -hmm. This is the um, over temp one. Like if it gets too hot, that'll... And okay. it can't escape. It'll it, or these get blocked. Okay. It's like a safety valve. Okay, and, then the and that's the handle. Okay. Yeah, but you must make sure that you um, release the pressure when it's done cooking and let it oh. cool down a little bit before you open it. Otherwise, you could get burned with the steam. And when you do this, you want to orientate this sideways like this, honey. Uh -huh. You want, this is where the handle goes, okay. so you want these clear of the handle okay. area. Okay. Yeah, you put it on like that, and then put the, the little clip up. Okay. Yep, and then tighten her down. Not too tight, just snug. Can you check? Perfect. And also this one? Can you, I these mean, are fine. They should... These two, they should just move like this a little bit. And what about that? This is a handle, doesn't do anything. Okay. So, all right. Okay. All righty. That's it. How many minutes? About an hour. An hour. Hour. Okay. So we're cooking now. <laughs> we're cooking now. So you take your pressure cooker, mm -hmm. put it directly into the fire. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> I have my fire poker. We picked it up over the weekend on our way back uh, up in Upper uh, Illinois on a back road. They were having a barn sale. We picked up a 90-year-old wheelbarrow for Maria to use for her garden. And also we got this, five bucks. Uh, probably a hundred years old. They said it was, um, you would use it to open the door in the corn silos. So this would be very old, but it's nice and heavy. Uh, it's really good for moving your stuff around in the fire. Also, it's also nice with the cooker. You can just hook the 
kettle and then take it out. So it's very nice, very handy. So I doubt that you're going to find this, but some sort of a um, hook that you can use to grab it would be nice. Otherwise, just uh, the other thing you can do, take a glove, like a oven mitt or a fire pit glove like you'd have for your barbecue, and then you can just reach in and grab it and take it as well, just like that. That's it. All right. Now we wait. We have uh, about 45 more minutes, and then it'll be time to eat. One thing we noticed after we put it on uh, around the edge of the lid, they had steam coming out just a little bit. Uh, instead of coming out, you can see it's coming out of the, uh, the vent. That's normal. But you could hear it hissing out of the side just a little bit. And you just need to tighten it down a little bit more if that's true. And uh, I took it out, cranked it down a little bit harder, and there's no more uh, steam escaping through the side of the lid. But this thing is half inch thick aluminum. I doubt you could tighten it down hard enough to break it. So you will need to really tighten it up uh, securely. But it's doing well now. You can see right in the campfire. We're about uh, 40 minutes from dinner. Really looking forward to uh, really looking forward to taking it out and seeing what it looks like, how it tastes. It smells good. You can smell it cooking. It smells good now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Time for. Uh, beer. We'll get a chair, have a beer, and we'll just sit here and watch it do its thing. No work involved. I think that's good enough fire, right? Oh, definitely. Matter of fact, I read that if you're cooking it on a regular burner, like we let's say we use it in the house or on another one once it gets to cooking you should um, the steam's coming out pressure is built up you should back off the uh, flame a little bit just maintain it it doesn't need to be on high the whole time uh, I don't think there's any danger in this these coals of it going out you know, it's, um, this is, I think, worked out just perfect for it. You know, you've got some nice hot coals. Mm -hmm. With our grate, we've got our half grate. We could do this, put the half grate on here, and be grilling steaks or, you know, uh, brats or hot dogs or something, you know, in addition. Mm -hmm. This is a really nice um, fire pit that we picked up at Menards mm -hmm. uh, when we first moved here. So, it's very nice. A good size. I suspect we're going to have a lot of um, Afghan pressure cooker meals. <laughs> this would go nice with, um, you know, if we're grilling or if I'm smoking something. Maybe I smoke a brisket and then we do this to go with it. Something, you know, a, a chicken or some other, maybe uh, some lamb. Yeah, just put only a. I mean, you do first the brisket or the smoke, and then after that you do that. That's oh. what I told you. Oh my you god, if you smoked it first and then put it in here, oh my god, it would be so tender. That's why in, in winter time we can do more smoke now uh, when we come back, and then after that we just put it in our... I gotta say those pork ribs that we smoked a while back and then we froze them yeah. when we reheated them they were more tender and and better yeah. even than they were they were really good mm -hmm. I did not expect that and they were really good to start with mm -hmm. um, but they were at least as good I still think they might have been better mm -hmm. so, yeah. I think we can bring our 
Well, we still have one slot. Hmm, we do. We can bring that if you want it to. Every time that little puff of steam comes out, you can smell it cooking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Mm -hmm. Super tasty, I think. This is going to be a nice dinner, honey. I wonder, we could do this in the fireplace in the house. Have <laughs> the fire going in the fireplace yeah. and uh, just throw the, the pressure cooker in the fireplace oh, and then cook. <laughs> That'll be yeah. that'll be fun, huh? Maybe we'll do a video about that uh, in the winter. <laughs> got the fire going, sitting around the fire, and then we have an having a cocktail. Then all of a sudden we throw the little Afghan pressure cooker into the fireplace, <laughs> yeah. cook dinner there. <laughs> yes, honey. Mm. Would be a great Snowing idea. outside. <laughs> what are you guys up to? Ah, uh, we got the Afghan pressure cooker in the fireplace. <laughs> okay, it's been an hour. We're going to take it off, see how it's doing. It smells really good. The steam escaping. Oh my goodness, it smells tasty. So, it's just sitting on the fire. Okay, now, very important, don't open it. There's two choices. One, you can let it sit for 40 minutes to an hour and the steam decompress on its own. Mm -hmm. Or two, you can do what I'm going to do, and that is, I'm going to just release the steam. But they said it's better if you just wait for... Um, I don't know if it's to... better, but uh, that's what one person I read about said. So I think when we have time, I think we'll try that mm -hmm. and see. Maybe that will just... It's going to continue to cook in there because all the pressure. So that's like even more slow cooking, I guess. But maybe it'll be more flavor. I don't know. We'll try it both ways. But... Today it's late and we're hungry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and it's been smelling really good. So I'm just offering options. So you are just releasing it both the nozzle. Just lifting so yeah. that they uh, let the air out, steam out. But even so, I noticed when we did the um, seasoning mm -hmm. that even after this, when you open the first open the lid, there's still steam inside a little bit. It's mm -hmm. hot. And uh, just be careful when you lift it, you lift it away from you uh, so that you'll see what I do. But make sure that way you don't burn yourself or, you know, a little steam come up and burn your wrist. I remember last year, no, was it last year I burned my wrist on the coffee pot? Yeah. I reached over the kettle <laughs> and um, had a steam burn on my wrist on the inside on this soft part. Oh my goodness. It took a long time for that to heal. Yeah. All right, so I think we're good. So. Oh, use your... Hot. Well, it's not too hot, but definitely a little bit. All right, so. get to see our handiwork honey I just don't want to burn our uh, I don't think it's that hot but I don't want to 
All right. So what I was mentioning is this is the uh, knob that you can touch. This is not hot. But even so, when you pick it up, some residual yeah. steam will come out. So you just want to be careful. Uh, like if you lift it like this, yeah. it go. Okay. You can see it coming out. So. Ooh, la, la. Oh my. Man. Now. Okay. Oh. My. <laughs> Ooh, very soft. Oh yeah. Very tender. Look at that. It just falls apart. Yeah. And all of this uh, stew mix is just caramelized together in there. Mm hmm. Mm. Let's see. Moment of truth. That's really good. It tastes like a stew that you had cooking all day. Yeah? Yeah. You're really a little spicy, nice. Let me uh, let you take a taste and you tell me what you think. Mm. It's just the meat, but um, for me, I think we could have left a little bit more water in it, but it's very nice, thick, rich mm. gravy. Good. Yeah. Good. Moist, flavor infused all the way through. Right. It's not that we. It's spicy in the end, but it's it's really good. Mm hmm Yeah, it's really good. You see? Ooh, like yeah. That. Ooh, it's very um soft. The mm. meat is so yeah. soft. Oh, oh yeah. I want to try one of the uh, potatoes. Yeah. 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 It wants to escape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like perfectly cooked. Yeah? Yeah, it's uh, not mushy mushy. Yeah. But it's very, very soft. Yes. But it still holds its texture and its shape. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really good. That's uh, um, Sarah. Yeah, I think um, it's time for dinner. Mm-hmm. Bye, guys. <laughs> See you later. Mabruk. Hope you enjoyed. Mabruk. First, uh, <laughs> uh, we believe that our first pressure cook is a success. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's time for us to eat. Yes. See you later. Bye. Okay, we're going to uh, plate it into a bowl so we can see what we got. Maria's uh, heating up some rice. <laughs> of course. She must have rice. I don't need it. I'm just going to have the vegetables. Man, the meat is <laughs> really, really tender. And it's, uh, there's a lot of meat in there. Tomorrow we will definitely add more vegetables. Mm -hmm. So, do this way. Look how nice and thick that gravy is. Oh yeah. Okay, I think that's good. Uh, 
All right, it's our finished dinner. Looks good. Time to eat. Beeps too.